I can't believe we're at season six already. Welcome everyone to a new episode of the Mod Showcase. Hope you all are having a wonderful time already with the latest DLC, the Conservation Pack. Now, of course, this pack brought us some very peculiar rigs. We have a new Oryx rig, we have a new Horse rig, we have a new Siamang rig, and of course, we do have the last but not the least, the Amor Leopard. Now, of course, we already have a couple mods that are making you of this but we also have a lot of other ones too so without further ado we're just gonna get started already with the big boy uh this one is probably gonna be one of my favorite mods i've ever made of all time this one is of course the lar gibbon these guys are exceptional i was able to make these with a little bit of help from jen she was able to help me out with the model and these guys are so freaking cool now of course these guys are able to brachiate uh, so that is very interesting. You guys just gotta like learn how to use this uh, brachiation rig a little bit more. So they will do that eventually. Hopefully we can actually see them in action. I'm sure that they will use it eventually. Yeah, there we go. So they do have sexual dimorphism, which is very apparent. So the males do have these beautiful black coats with the white faces. And you can kind of see it a little bit better right there. And they are very fluffy, which I think is the cutest thing ever. And of course the females have a little bit more of a tannish, maybe a little bit of yellow, yellowish coat. And they also do have that white outline around the face, which the males have as well. This was a really fun mod to work on. These guys are all set up with like their Zoopedias and descriptions and stuff. They are from kind of like Southeast Asia and stuff like that, from Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Thailand, all that jazz and they're so freaking adorable now unfortunately we still don't have sound modding which is quite a shame for the lar gibbon because they do have these very unique calls very unique and distinct from the siamang so once those do get figured out that is probably going to be one of the first animals i do do that on but in the meantime they get the job done just fine i really do love the females i love how they're kind of like crown was made this is probably one of my favorite projects i've ever had the pleasure of working on and it was just super amazing to get this all done so that is of course a lar gibbon but we're moving on to my good friend vincible uh he made this beautiful savannah monitor check these guys out so these guys are found in ethiopia and i forget where else we're just going to consult that little zoopedia right there uh in their natural habitat ethiopia and kenya so these guys are relatively common in reptile houses and stuff like that. They're an African monitor species and Vince did such a beautiful job with them. I always say that reptiles are probably one of the hardest things to do, but it looks like Vince was able to nail it just really, really well. I love how much detail he was able to get into here, especially with all these stripes along the tail. You can see just how chunky it kind of is from this far away. And they are pretty fat boys, which I really do like. Look at that chunkiness right there. But yeah, these guys are looking incredible, but they do like to sleep a lot, kind of like real reptiles, so that really is super cool. So everyone go check that out in case if you guys are building for any reptile houses and stuff like that. Moving on through here, though, we do have yet another remaster. Listen, no one is safe from the Narwhaler, especially the Hippo. Very small changes to the Hippo, indeed. Uh, just, they, he really was able to help fix up the model a little bit. Specifically, I don't really know what is happening over here. But he was able to change out both the male and the female, kind of make them a little bit more iconic. I believe he did some work on the snout and a little bit of work on the belly back here. I will have links to all the mods in the description down below in case if you guys do want to check them out. <gasps> Look at that. That's so cool. It's not even part of the mod. They're just wicked awesome animals. But yeah, I will have the link to the mod in the description down below so you guys can actually compare and contrast it to the original Frontier model. Up next, we have particularly a very favorite animal of mine. We have the Lujong Cloud Rat, otherwise known as the Northern Lujong Giant Cloud Rat. Hell of a name. So these guys are a particularly really awesome rodent from the Philippines. 
Uh, specifically from the island of Lujan. These guys are wicked adorable. And they're often found in scrublands and kind of arboreal areas. Many times in zoos you'll see them kind of like in these kind of arboreal kind of habitats. I've been lucky enough to actually see these guys twice this year. Uh, both at National and Bronx. And these guys are really freaking awesome. I really do love how well these guys came out. These are of course made by the one and only Nicholas Line Rider. And I was able to finally code them. They've kind of been sitting in my box for a good two updates now, uh, and it was only until now that I was able to actually update them to be a new species. Uh, they are, of course, based off of the prairie dog, which means, unfortunately, they do not climb, uh, which is a shame, and I have been trying to figure out how to disable the digging behavior on them, but still, I haven't really found much uh, avail to that. I'm still trying to work that out. Hopefully, I can find a fix to that for both these guys and the guinea pigs relatively soon. But these guys are still adorable regardless. I know I have quite a considerable Filipino fan base, so I hope you guys really do enjoy this creature. These guys are some of my favorites too. So I just know just how awesome it is just to have like one of your favorite animals represented in Planet Zoo. So I hope this goes a long way. I kind of love when they sit like that. I know they're not really supposed to, but it's still the cutest thing. Look at him. He's such a polite little gentleman. Someone screen cap this and put a little like top hat on him because I'm going to be too lazy to actually do that. Now moving on through here, Jen is already making quick work of the Przewalski's Wild Horse Rig. This one is, of course, the standard donkey, very different from the miniature donkey. These guys are more standard size. These guys are incredible to have for petting zoos and whatnot. They're more so often used as a beast of labor or beast of burden i think it really is uh so these guys are very much well known for their very big strength and endurance for carrying large amounts of loads of items all across great distances and whatnot nowadays they're just a very adorable farm livestock and really perfect for petting zoos and whatnot so these guys are some of the cutest guys out there hopefully i will be remastering the miniature donkey uh, I'm not sure if Jen will let me use this one as a base for that, but I do want to get that one all up to snuff, especially using the new Przewalski's Wild Horse Rig. Look at them sleep. That's the cutest thing ever, and they also do have a lot of really awesome built-in variants. So you get, like, these nice bright gray colors, and you also get this, like, kind of signature darker one. Kind of like a chestnut, if that makes sense. So those guys are looking gorgeous as always, and then we're moving on to the aquatic mods. So once again, I've had a lot of stuff in my folder, and I finally have the time, because guess what? Okay, we're going back over here just to kind of talk about this. 1.10 did not break any animal mods. I am rejoicing over here. You see this keeper with the big ol' smile? That's me right now. So now we do not need to update mods from 1.9 to 1.10, and it's the best thing ever. However, there are some small issues, so in case if you guys did have some props, like the uh, Safari Pack props, in case if you guys did have these in your zoo, like the Serengeti Rocks, you might notice that if you had them, like, let's just say bright blue, they might have went back to orange. That is because that is probably the only thing that actually did break in this update. Non-Axi prop mods that uh, kind of broke uh, will get their flexi color channels reverted back to whatever it originally was. That is quite a little bit of a shame if your entire zoo is based off of prop mods, but if it's not, it's a relatively simple fix. You just go in and recolor those pieces. Another advantage of building in groups, which is really awesome to have. But yeah, so no mods were broken this update, so I finally had the time to work with Buff Zoo to finally bring a lot of these species to be new species. So we have a lot of awesome fish in here. Don't mind me, I'm just going to bring all these guys back to the start. And we're going to start off with our probably biggest one in here. We have the giant ore fish, and we're just going to wait for them to deep dive. There they go. Again, another huge benefit to the new Axie fish mods, they swim even better now, which is exceptional to have. Of course, if you guys are having some problems with fish going to the water, just make sure it's completely navigatable. Make sure that you have enough deep room in the kind of puddle that you have set up for them in order for them to swim around in. That's a very important thing to have. 
Now back to the actual fish itself, this is the giant ore fish. These guys are some of my favorites ever since I learned about these guys from Endless Ocean. These guys have a beautiful bright blue and orange texture to them. And I believe this model was taken from Beyond Blue, which is a very incredible game. You guys should go check it out in case if you guys did like Endless Ocean way back in the day. It's pretty much the modern successor to it and it's a really, really awesome game. But these guys are incredible, and in case if you guys do want to set up these like beautiful, beautiful landscapes to have these guys kind of swim around in, maybe you have like, I don't know, what's like a, uh, let's see if there's like a ship in here that we could kind of use over here. Small Arabian ship. I believe these are done by Poison Blade, so I'm just going to toss one up here, then we can kind of sink one down here into the ground. This is a little bit of a set piece for today's showcase that's going to look wicked awesome. So you could set that up for these guys. And of course we have a lot of other fish. This one of course is the Tosaken Goldfish. These guys are a specific breed of goldfish originally developed in Japan. They are very much well known for their beautiful fan kind of like frilly fins. Uh, which is very interesting because you may think that like, you know, it's like all one fin, but a lot of skeletal, um, sorry, I'm trying to find the words because I was reading about this. A lot of skeletal analysis was able to determine that these are actually two separate fins, which are conjoined at a very specific part in their fa fan, I guess. Yeah, I should probably stop trying to make stuff up over here. I'm not making stuff up, I'm trying to reiterate some stuff that I learned a little bit ago. But of course these guys are incredibly beautiful and they can cohabitate with various other fish, even though they may be able to crossbreed with them. So of course if you guys want to put the koi and the common goldfish in with these guys, you can do that. And speaking of the common goldfish, we also have these guys here as well if I could find them. Relatively simple animal, nothing really too crazy going on about them. This one is kind of stuck to the surface right now, but hopefully he can unfreeze in just a little bit. In case if you guys do want to make a little goldfish ponds or little koi ponds with all of those carp, uh, fish made out of carp, I guess that kind of is, you guys can do that. These guys are wicked adorable. They look kind of like koi, but they're just a little bit more different. And they're perfect in case if you guys do have any Asian sections in your zoos. Of course, the goldfish, the koi, all those kinds of creatures were, were originally bred in kind of like China, Korea, Japan, all those areas. So it really is super awesome to have that kind of fish diversity represented over there. Especially when we start to work in with the breeds. And speaking of those, we have one that I am particularly particularly kind of freaked out by, but still is a wicked awesome nonetheless. This one is of course the Mirror Carp, named distinctly so because of its kind of shapes of its shapes and colors of its scales. You may notice that these guys only have scales in particularly some parts of their body, which is very interesting to read about. These guys were originally bred specifically to have scales that are big and easy to pluck off so that monks could eat them a lot easier. In case if you guys don't know, and looking at our goldfish over here, you may notice that they have a lot of scales kind of built onto them when they're not like, you know, freaking out. Meanwhile, the mirror carp, of course, is bred specifically so that it has nice big scales and that it is easy to remove those scales from, so it's a lot easier to eat. Regardless, it's a very prized sport fish, which makes them a really, really awesome thing to have in like your lakes and rivers and stuff like that. They are invasive in many parts of the United States, as well as all around the world, especially in Europe. But still, if you guys want to do have a beautiful exhibition of these beautiful creatures, I definitely suggest you guys check these guys out, because they are such a unique animal, and I can't wait to see you guys start to build for them. Moving on from there, we're still not done with our carp, believe it or not. I'm just carping my pants over here. We have the silver carp. These guys were originally bred in, hold on, I have it right over here, China and Russia, kind of in the Amur River area. Uh, not really bred, they're actually their own species. So these guys are completely wild. So these guys, of course, are from the Amur region, so if you guys do want to cohabitate these guys 
with the Amor Leopard, I don't think I actually put them on the Interspecies Enrichment, but they should be fine to just get along over there. They're beautiful animals, of course named aptly so because of their beautiful silver coloration. These guys are also pretty invasive in the United States. They were originally introduced to combat algae, rapidly growing algae and stuff like that, but now they're kind of an invasive species on their own, which kind of sucks. Obviously, because, you know, invasive species aren't really the best, but they're still a really awesome creature to have nonetheless. So if you guys do want to populate your rivers and stuff like that with these guys, I definitely do suggest you guys check these guys out. Now, moving on from there, we have another giant creature. This is the giant Trevally. These guys are a beautiful pelagic fish, often found in schools within the Indo-Pacific. These guys are incredibly beautiful. I remember these guys back in Endless Ocean. Uh, just really incredibly beautiful creatures. I always do love these schooling fish more than anything just because they're just so unique. I don't know. I know they're pretty common as a sporting fish too, which is really awesome. I don't know. Just really awesome creature. Now I know a lot of you guys tend to like the more so tropical fish a lot more. So if I could find one of these guys over here... We could check these guys out. So unfortunately, they are kind of getting a little glitched out. Again, once you have a little bit too many in here, as I do, they may kind of mess up with the navigation. Believe me, the fish mods are an ever-going process in trying to figure out just how they work, just how they respond to everything. What I think I'll do is probably box everyone up and have everyone go back into the water. But of course, the singular banner fish is found both in the Arabian Sea, the Indo-Pacific as well. And they're currently endangered in the Indo-Pacific, no, in the Arabian Sea, which kind of sucks. Uh, obviously, it always sucks whenever an animal is endangered and stuff like that. But they're relatively fine all across the rest of the world, which is good. We can at least take those dubs whenever we can. But they really are such beautiful creatures. Whenever they aren't glitching out, oh my gosh, little dude, stop. Of course, the albino channel for these guys is kind of broken. I think Buffzoo will buff that out, believe it or not. Haha, <laughs> we'll, we'll play on words over there. So yeah, unfortunately, these guys do kind of get a little glitched out, which will be fixed. I think there is a patch out for them right now. Oh no, they're swimming just fine. Never mind. So of course, these guys will go beautifully with the rest of the reef fish that we have currently out for Planet Zoo. And yeah, these guys are very distinct. You guys remember Gil from Finding Nemo. While he isn't this species exactly, he was a Moorish idol, which I believe we already have out. These guys are relatively in the same class, the same family even, I want to say. Uh, and they're just really, really beautiful creatures. Uh, if you guys do want to have like these beautiful, um, you know, planted coral reefs, these guys are perfect for that as well. But now moving on to probably the most unique one in here, we have the Spotted Eagle Ray. Uh, and very much like eagles, these guys do fly relatively fast around your tanks. So of course these guys, again, in the, actually no, I believe these guys are found worldwide. Yep, uh, subtropical and stuff like that, really awesome creature nonetheless. Uh, did the Zoopedia actually update? Yeah, it did. Awesome. Uh, I noticed for the cow nose ray that didn't update, so I gotta go back and fix that relatively soon. But these guys are beautiful. These guys are some of my favorite ray species, specifically because they have these beautiful polka dot colorations on them, and they have pretty unique undersides too. So very much unique and distinct from the cow nose ray. These guys do have very much unique mouths, kind of suited for their diet. They, of course, eat, um shellfish and stuff like that so they kind of do swim around the seas kind of like that then whenever they see a little shellfish down below they'll swoop on in eat it and then these mouths are made specifically so that they can kind of grind those shells open dispose of the shell and eat all the juicy insides of like the clams and mollusks that they do have but believe it or not my friends that is it for this week's showcase a little bit of a quick start already with Season 6 and Update 1.10. We already have a lot of stuff in the works behind the scenes. So I can't wait to see you guys next week for when we do go all over that stuff. I can't thank you guys enough for stopping by and supporting the channel. Another season, another update, and stuff like that. You guys are easily one of the best communities out there in Planet Zoo. And I'll tell you what, we'll end it with the Gibbon over here. She looks like a very polite gentlewoman. Uh, and yeah, we're just going to end it right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Always do appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe if you can. 
we're like already a quarter of the way to 9,000 subscribers. Oh my god. So if we could reach 10,000 by the end of this year, screw it. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do a fun little live stream for that. We could do a fun little live stream. But still, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are always the best. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.